Ah, Mega Evolution. Such a beautiful thing. For those of you that may not know, Mega Evolution is this new feature introduced in Generation 6 where certain Pokemon that hold dilocated Mega Stone can Mega Evolve during battle. Since probably about 99% of you watching already know what this is, I won't go into any further detail. But for those of you that really have no idea what Mega Evolution is, I'll leave a page in the description that talks all about it. Anyways, what's up guys? I haven't done one of these in a while, but welcome to my top 10 list of my favourite Mega Evolutions. I originally planned on doing this about a month after X and Y came out, but I just never got round to it, and honestly, I'm kinda glad I held off for as long as I did. My opinions changed a lot and I'm finally content with my top 10 list. But before we get into it, I feel like I should let everyone know the obvious, this list is my favourite Mega Evolution list, nothing else. You're more than welcome to leave your own top 10 Mega Evolutions in the comments below. Currently there are only 28 Mega Evolutions so there isn't that much to choose from, but either way, let's get into number 10. So number 10 on my list is Mega Absol. I guess we should start off with the fact that Absol itself is one of my favourite Pokemon, and back about 9 months ago before Mega Evolution was announced, I made a top 10 video of Pokemon I thought deserved an evolution in X and Y. And Absol just so happened to be on that list, because I thought it deserved to be made stronger. So as soon as it was announced that Absol was going to be getting this new thing called Mega Evolution, I automatically fell in love. But when X and Y came out and I got to use him, he just wasn't as good as I hoped. I guess I just don't really like how frail he is. If I'm being honest, I more so like him because of his design. It is a bit more feminine than I imagined an evolution of him to be, but I actually prefer it. There is one thing I really want for him though, and that's for him to be a part fairy type. I feel like being part fairy type would help him take hits better, because fairy resists two of his current weaknesses, fighting and bug, so they'll end up doing neutral damage to him. But it does give him two new weaknesses, steel and poison, but I honestly think it would be worth it, because he'll get that stab player off to slay dragons with. But enough rambling about how I think he could be improved. I love Mega Absol, but him not being as good as I hoped puts him in the number 10 spot of my favourite Mega Evolutions. Coming in at number 9 is Mega Mewtwo Y. Those of you that are active viewers of my channel know I don't like legendary Pokemon all that much, so this may come off as a surprise to you. And honestly I don't get it either, I just really like Mega Mewtwo Y. I guess it's because I'm a fan of smaller legendary Pokemon, and I really like how he's just floating around and he, whenever he makes a move he just raises his hand and just boom, dead Pokemon. And that's just honestly it, I just really like him. There was one thing about him that I didn't realise for the longest time though, and that's that Mega Mewtwo Y is just a pure psychic type. I really thought he was partially fairy type and I just figured, you know, it made sense that Nintendo would want to sort of promote fairy type through the legendary Pokemon Mewtwo, but he's just a fairy type, he's not fairy psychic, he's just fairy, he's not Gordivore, he's Mewtwo, he's not Gordivore, he's Mewtwo. But that doesn't make a difference, it was just more of a surprise sort of thing. Like I honestly had no idea. Anyways, yeah. I haven't got the chance to use him competitively since I don't really play with legendaries all that much, but I'm sure he'll be great to use. Since he does have the highest total base stat out of every single Pokemon, of course alongside his ugly twin Mewtwo X. God, I hate that thing so much. It legit looks like a fakemon you'd find off DeviantArt. Anyways, that's another reason why I love Mewtwo Y so much. It has the highest total base stat out of every single Pokemon, higher than Arceus himself, which I'm really happy about because honestly, that's one of the reasons why I didn't like Arceus one bit. I felt like Mewtwo should be the strongest Pokemon stat-wise, not Arceus. Anyways, dumb rant over, I just think Mewtwo Y is cool as fuck, and fuck Arceus and fuck Mewtwo X. Taking the number 8 spot is Mega Medicam. Cham. Chum. I don't even know. Anyways, I'm not crazy about its design, I mean, it is good, definitely a lot better than regular medicams. Chams. I, I'm sorry, I really, I, I'm so used to saying cam, but everyone hates it when I say cam, I'm just, I'm just, just ignore it. <laughs> but I really only like Mega Medicam just because of how powerful it is. It hits really fucking hard and should never be underestimated. I know I've underestimated it a few times, and it wasn't the smartest thing I've ever done. It's got respectable speed behind it to where if you had speed it, your defenses is probably not that great and you won't appreciate a bullet punch to the face. Not to mention it gets a wide variety of moves, so predicting what it carries could be difficult. But yeah, I guess I just really like it because of how useful it is in battle, so uh, not much else to say here. Moving on. In 7th place we have ourselves Mega Lucario. Honestly, coming up for a reason why I like this dude is really hard. He's just got this aura about him that screams badass. Like, his design is awesome. I wasn't actually too keen on it at first, but it just it really grew on me and now I love it. And this dude is so important, he has a statue built after him. And there's no doubt that he's extremely powerful with a lot of flexibility. 
The only downside is that he's too strong and he got banned by Smogon, which is the rule set I enjoy playing by. So if you don't like that, then just don't comment about it. I don't want to hear any of Smogon sucks, but shut up. So pretty much to use him in battle, I'm going to have to use him in the battle spot or go up against the big boys. Which sucks, but you can't have everything you want. Okay, so number 6 on my list is Mega Pinsir. I guess you could say the reason for liking him is pretty much the same as Mega Medichams. Personally, I prefer his design to Mega Medichams just because I thought about them terrifying. Look, I still can't get that name down. It's so fucking ir I'm sorry. Don't go don't get mad at me in the comments. But just like Mega Medicam, he's a really good Pokemon in battle and you should never ever be underestimated. The reason he's so goddamn powerful is because of his ability Aerialate. A new ability introduced in Generation 6, which is currently exclusive to him. Aerialate turns normal type moves into flying type. And if the user of this move is a flying type Pokemon, the move will gain a stab boost. I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm trying to teach you something here, but I'm just explaining why I love him. He does have one big flaw though, and that's that he's 4 times weak to rock, so he's badly damaged by stealth rocks, but I don't care. Mega Pinsir is a great Pokemon, and that's why he's number 6 on this list. Alright, halfway there, picking up the number 5 slot is Mega Charizard Y. I'm sure a lot of you people, when it comes to design at least, prefer Mega Charizard X, but personally, I've always liked Charizard Y more. I just think he looks more dragon-like. His wings are savage as fuck. And no, I don't hate Charizard X like I hate Mewtwo X, I just prefer Charizard Y. Even though the dragon typing on X is nice, I just really enjoy Charizard Y. But other than having a really neat design, I also like Charizard Y because of how good of a Pokemon he became competitively. He has an insanely high special attack stat and paired up with his new ability Drought, it's just made him so much better. Water type moves do less damage to him in the sun and also boost the power of his fire type moves. Even if you resist fire type, a flamethrower from a Charizard Y in the sun is still going to sting. And that's what I love about him. He's just so damn powerful. Okay, so I'm not even gonna lie, choosing between number 3 and 4 was probably the hardest decision I had to make when coming up with this list. But, coming in at number 4 is Mega Gardevoir. I've always really liked Gardevoir ever since I was younger. I don't know why exactly, it's just always been in my top 10 favorite Pokemon, and I want to say that it always will be. And the fact that it mega evolved in X and Y is just amazing. At first, I wasn't too keen on its design. My first impression of it was they just made its dress bigger, but after a while, it really, really grew on me. Especially after seeing its shiny mega evolution. The shit is beautiful. They also threw in some pretty rad glove looking things. I don't know what they are, but I just really like it. And really, there isn't much they could have done to Mega Gardevoir without ruining how it looked. They could have pulled a Mega Absol and put wings on it, you know, it would have made sense since it's part fairy, but I don't really mind. I like the design, it currently has a lot. Anyways, moving onwards to how it does in battle, I see it as a special attacking Mega Pinsir that's fairy type, but not as offensive, pretty much because Pixelate does the exact same thing as Aerialate, but makes moves fairy type rather than flying, which is awesome. But other than that, Gordor has a new fairy type in X and Y as a secondary type, so now it's no longer weak to dark type and bug type, which is great because... Sucker Punch won't Oko it now, uh, or at least, you know, depending on what it's from, I guess. But, you know, it had more of a chance to Oko uh, Gardevoir uh, in, you know, 5th gen when it was just a psychic type because of... Uh, but, I don't know, Sucker Punch is a really nice move, so I was like, hey, he doesn't get wrecked with Sucker Punch as easily anymore. I feel like I'm getting off track, though, so pretty much, in a nutshell, Mega Gardevoir is awesome. I really love regular Gardevoir, so the idea of this Mega is just amazing. It's part fairy now, which makes it a much stronger Pokemon, and I love that. I'm glad Gardevoir is finally getting some love in the competitive scene. Alright, so coming all the way in at number 3 is Mega Scissor. I mentioned before I had a hard time choosing between number 3 and 4, and the reason is because I've always liked Gardevoir, but I just recently found a new love for Scissor. Or should I say Mega Scissor? I don't really know why, he's just freaking awesome. And I love using him in battle. Like Mega Gardevoir, when I first saw him, I wasn't too keen on his design, but it's just really grown on me, I don't know why. Plus he's a fucking Steel type, and Steel types are amazing. I think one of the reasons why I like him so much is because when he goes Mega, he like crosses his arms and is all badass and stuff, and I don't, I don't know, he just... He, he's got like chainsaws for hands as well, it's fucking sick. Just look at how tall he is too, he's just amazing, his design is just overall amazing. One of my favorites. And when it comes to competitive battling, Mega Scissor is an amazing bulky attacker that has access to priority, setup, and recovery moves, as well as defog to get rid of entry hazards. He's just so compact, he's awesome, and he's helped me win a lot of my battles. So I guess that's really it. I just really like Mega Scissor, man. Moving on.
Number two on my list is Mega Mawile. I've always liked Mawile ever since it existed, it just never really was a good Pokemon. Even when Gen 5 came around and a lot of Pokemon were becoming good, Mawile never really got any justice done to it. Whereas the sort of mini counterpart thing, Sableye got the ability Prankster which made up for his poor stats. So now we're in Generation 6 and Mawile has a Mega Evolution and I'm in love. Like Mega Absol, it was on my top 10 list of Pokemon I wanted to evolve in X and Y, little did I know I was going to kind of get my wish. And honestly, I prefer it that way, because I like Mawile. A regular evolution would have been cool too, but I like the idea of a Mega Evolution just because it's sort of like the true form of the Pokemon or whatever. The only reason I wanted a Mawile Evolution was so it would be stronger. And a Mega Evolution pretty much does it for him, so you know, no need for an Evolution. Oh, and I also love his design. Mega Mawile is so badass, it's got three mouths, and you know, two of which are lethal. And when it comes to competitive battling, Mega Mawile is definitely one of the best there is. With a solid new typing steel fairy, Mawile only has two weaknesses and resists so much. So taking hits shouldn't be too hard. Not to mention its attack stat is sky high when you add up the huge power boost it gets. The only downside is that it's really slow so you need to take hits in order to strike back. Or you could just toss a sucker punch their way. That works too. But honestly, I'm just really happy that Mawile finally became good. It deserves it. Anyways, let's move on to my favourite mega evolution. I assume that quite a lot of you will already know this because I've been asked this question many many times, but my favourite Mega Evolution is Mega Binet. The reason I like Mega Binet is pretty similar to the reason why I like Mega Mawile. I really liked it as a Pokemon itself, but it just never really was that good. I had always wanted it to get better, even when Gen 5 came around and decided to help out a lot of Pokemon, you know, like Sableye, it just never really got any help. And not to mention, you know, in Gen 4, when Dusclops' bitch ass decided to evolve, leaving its sort of uh, third gen rivalry it had with Binette going on, uh, and been, you know, behind, that honestly really upset me, and uh, it still kind of does upset me to this day, like, why did they leave Binette out of the sort of loop? Why didn't they evolve Binette too? They evolved Murkrow and Misdrevious, which they seem to sort of have a rivalry thing going on, so I don't know why they sort of left Binette behind uh, and they gave Dusclops an evolution. I don't know, it just bothered me. But I'm glad Binette finally got a Mega Evolution and got shown some love. Although I think a regular evolution back in Gen 4 would have been a lot better, I'm, I'm not going to complain. I should stop complaining. But design-wise, I think it's just the best. I honestly just, I it's the it's my favorite Mega Evolution design. It's the best, and that, that's just the only like that's the biggest reason I like it. Honestly, I guess just because of like its zippers and its hands are amazing. It's all creepy and dark, and that's like the sort of stuff I like. I guess, and uh, it's just what I wanted from a Binet Evolution, honestly. And uh, since you guys know I'm big on competitive battling now, uh, when it comes down to that, I guess you could say it does sort of the same job as Sableye, but it doesn't have reliable recovery, so it's more offensive than anything. Especially with the crazy high attacks that it has, you'd be crazy not to abuse it. So you could say it's definitely not one of the best Mega Evolutions for competitive battles, but I still like to use it a lot. I really like Prankster Pokemon, which, you know, is Mega Binet's ability for those of you that don't know. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it really. I just really like how the Mega looks. Oh god. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to drop a like and share with your friends. And don't forget to let me know what your top 10 favorite Mega Evolutions are in the comments below. And subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to try and pump a few more of these out uh, a bit more often for you guys. I hope at least.